if I look at two schools of thought regarding humanitarian work as an example, mm -hmm. one would be there's a lot of shit that's broken. Let me go fix broken stuff. That's one way of looking at it. Another way of looking at it is forget about the broken stuff. Let's just invent a new future. That's so compelling. People are like, oh, I want that. Let me forego the old paradigm with the old way of doing things. Mm -hmm. What is your thought about one or the other or neither? Well, the first one brings disappointment because you've just fixed something that you know is going to break again. So people are still a little bit, you know, they're just like, oh, we still have to do this. The problem with the utopian, like, future proofing solution that's going to leapfrog you to the next, you know, like, I, like a good example, I love UBI. I think universal basic in income is a fantastic way to think about how we allow a whole society to live a you know a a baseline existence right with the, with the resources and the wealth that's in the ground and in the air but the systems of capitalism are so deeply rooted in so many systems that for ubi to like take off it has to push capitalism through an understanding right of like the future is here. This is what it looks like. So at the moment, there's lots of these little experiments, whether they're here in Hudson, New York, or they're in, you know, Stockton or other areas of the United States, where people are doing little experiments to show the solution, how the solution can work. So you have to kind of coax the past into the future. You know, in 2000, you can look at even look this up. In 2001, there was an interview that was in the New York Times with the UN and myself. And the title of the, of the article was, we've got tents. We've got talents. Was, we have tents, T-E-N-T, -E -T -E uh -huh. tents. And this was in, in, in reference to refugees. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for the last 20 years, the UN has said, well, we have tents. We don't need anything else. And the humanitarian world has says, a refugee camp isn't camping. Right? It's not a joyful experience. These people are there for a decade. You cannot be building tents. You have to figure out an urban planning strategy that is about building temporary cities that will evolve and emerge. You cannot do this. But the UN doesn't believe that because that system doesn't exist. So you have to eventually slowly pull them along. And, you know, I've been a harsh, harsh critic of better shelter, which is the IKEA funded solution. But to be honest, they actually tried to do that. They didn't build a temp a permanent solution. They didn't build a tent. They built something that was midway in between that allowed the UN to see what the future looked like. So, you know, it's very rare that there's a leapfrog technology. Like everyone's like, yeah, we got smartphones and then we we had this like great moment. Well, guess what? Before this, there was palm pilots, there were razors, there were there was all sorts of semi smartphones where we were I, I remember having something from T Mobile, which was like you would flip the screen That's and right. would, yeah. Yeah, with you know, and it was like literally the screen was this big, it was like a lozenge, and it was a horrible phone but I could send a text message to somebody. That was mm. it, right? So there's been intermediary technologies that have driven us to the new, new future. So yeah, I think it's really hard. What, what tends to happen is those pioneering people that do the leapfrog technologies never financially benefit from it because they're too far ahead of everybody else. Mm -hmm. And so they end up taking all the liability and the risk for everybody mm -hmm. else and their company probably will fail. Mm -hmm. So and, and this comes from a, this comes from a history. So my father, there were three companies in the world that was, that were really focused on photo archiving and imaging. Mm -hmm. One of them was Kodak. Mm -hmm. One of them was called leaf and the other was my father's mm -hmm. and my father was way ahead of everyone else. And he would invent stuff all the time. But, you know, it turns out that he was like 10 years ahead of everybody. 
Mm-hmm. And as a result, Getty Images and Corbis and others, other photo archiving systems came into place after these three companies. My father's company went under, Kodak went bankrupt, and I don't even know if Leaf exists anymore. But like these were three companies that like hedged their bets into this future and were just too, too ahead of the game. Mm. 